I'm Gary Sliman, President and Founder of Great Transition Strategies. Today's topic, building trust in the remote environment. Who's been working remote lately? Most of us have, either completely or at least in a hybrid environment. Are you feeling as much trust with new people that come on board remotely or is it taking longer? I've had a number of instances with clients, that's what they want to talk about. How do I build trust with my team? Think about the best team you've ever been on and that you really trust in individuals and what did you have? Why did you trust those individuals? Settle Neely in her book, The Remote Work Revolution, talks about two, two types of trust. Cognitive, in your head, and emotional, what you feel. Cognitive trust, I trust this individual because I see what they do or I have some, I can look at them and think based on their work performance, based on their credentials, I could trust them in this environment. You trust a doctor. Never met him before, done some homework, you trust an accountant. You trust them cognitively, okay, because they're the capable someone in a position. You trust them because they're in that position at a job. Emotional trust. That is where you trust someone because of the care and relationship you have built with individuals. Maybe that doctor, maybe that accountant, where you've gone through some challenging times together with them, now you really trust now you trust them emotionally too. I think both are additive. So you have these two trusts, cognitive and emotional. I think they're additive and, and it grows. The more you have, when you have both of them, now you have a really trusting relationship. So let's go into the workplace. So what are you missing in the remote work environment? I think you're missing the opportunity to build emotional trust. So let me give an example that I had with a client. Brenda, newly on board, uh, onboarded. She did a two week onboard process that was in person and now she was put on a remote team. Two weeks in this remote team and she was given this project. Had not had time to build a really good relationship with her boss yet. She's only been there. She met only a few members of the team. She came on board in the summer and she met three of the people, three of, the, of this team of six. She didn't meet the other three. So she has this project she has to get done. It's a marketing project, struggling. Doesn't know how to reach out. And she's afraid to reach out to the team because she felt that, well, the folks I met seems really ultra competitive and I don't want to highlight myself as incompetent. So what she did is she reached out to someone she met on the onboarding process. The person from the company running the onboarding process showed a lot of experience in the, in the company. She had some experience in, her, in the area of marketing in this company and they happened to be alumni of the same MBA program. So she had those bonds. So immediately, there's a cognitive trust. She proved herself, she showed her experience, showed capability. She trusted her immediately. And the connection with the MBA. They actually went to lunch a couple times and built up kind of a relationship there. At lunch, felt that they had a, had a, had a friendship going. So now she has some emotional trust. So she reached out to someone that she trusted. The advice from uh, Marie to Brenda was, why don't you reach out to Robert? He has experience in this year, I think he can help you out. Brendan reaches out to Robert, gets has a short meeting with him, and gives her gives him a direct gives her a direction to go, and, which ends up working out fine. She gets gets her unstuck, off she moves on the project. Wow. So why'd you trust Robert? Cognitive trust. Someone said, that guy's credible, I trust her. Listen. Okay. You can see with Brenda to Marie, cognitive and emotional. To Robert, cognitive trust, your trust individual. So what are you doing? What are you doing to ensure that you're building both of those? And I think that's, that's our task as leaders, to build both of those, cognitive. Do we know roles, responsibilities, credibility? Do we have the skills to do the job? And does everyone know that? Okay, that one's pretty easy. And then our work habits, what we produce, say what we're gonna do, we're reliable, you're trusted. There is a cognitive trust. Emotional trust really is creating, how do you build that? I think it's creating the space to do that. And when we're in the remote environment, we don't have the space like we used to at home. So how do you create that space? Maybe we don't have to be all business. Start the video meeting, run through the business, stop, done. Are you creating space at the beginning? Are you creating space, lunches, those kind of things so that individuals have time the bond emotionally. If you want to build emotional trust, you need to have space 
and time for individuals to get to know each other better so they can build that emotional trust, which is going to make your team stronger. And we've lost the space we used to have. If you're in a remote environment and you don't necessarily have the space, how do you build that? Hope you found that helpful. Cognitive and emotional trust. How do you build both? Think about it. What works for your team? Thanks for listening. I love the opportunity to work with you and help you put together a program to build cognitive and emotional trust with your team. Mm-hmm.